Hi, I'm Johnny, and today I'm going to show you how to build and deploy a REST API using Ruby on Rails and Heroku. Before we start, there are three things that you need. You'll need Ruby on Rails, you'll need a Heroku account, and you'll need the Heroku CLI. And I will leave links in the description for all three of these so you can download them before moving forward. Once you have them, you can simply create your new Rails app with the command Rails new. Today we're going to build a really simple dictionary API with words and definitions. So let's call it dictionary. And we'll add dash dash API before hitting enter in order to create our app. Give it a couple of minutes to download all of the bundles. And once your app is ready, just navigate into it and open it inside your code editor. The first thing you'll want to do inside your newly created app is generate a model. Now, in this case, we'll only need one. It's going to be a terms model that's going to have a word and the definition for every single word. So we'll create that model using Rails G and we'll generate, that's what the G is for, a new model with the name term and it'll have the properties word, which is a string and definition, which is text. And that'll create a couple of files for you that have to do um, with that model. Once the model is created, then you can use that model to create new terms. And we'll do that inside the seeds file. So if I go to seeds.rb, I can create a new term by calling the model term and calling the create method with the properties that I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for, I don't know, let's just call this one apple and we'll give it the definition, a red fruits. Once I've done that, then I can create the new term inside my database. However, if I try to do this, there'll be a problem because I haven't created the table yet. So if I try to do rake db.seed, it'll tell me that I need to run migrate first. So the migrate command, you can do rake db migrate or you could do rails db migrate. Oh, I can't spell. Mm -hmm. Rake DB migrates. Uh, you can do that or Rails DB migrates and it'll create the table for you. And then you can run your seed and it's going to insert it into the table for you. To make sure it works, you can run your new API, but you don't have any routes created for um, the app yet. So there's no way to access that data through any kind of client. So what we'll do is we'll create a controller and then we'll get we'll give access to that controller using a route. So run um, Rails G and controller and we'll make a terms controller. And inside this controller, which is called terms controller, we can create a method an index method that's going to give access to all of the available terms. So we'll use the model, the active record model to get all of the records. It always auto-completes this way. And then we will render using JSON, all of these terms. 
And the last thing we should do here is go to the route file in order to define the resources that we want here, which in this case is just the one resource terms. So now if we run Rails serve and we go to localhost 3000, we won't get anything except for the main Rails uh, welcome page. But if we go to slash terms, we should hit the index route, which will give us an error because I forgot to put an equal sign, obviously. Here we go. Oh, another error. Expecting end render JSON terms. Uh, it looks like I put the comma on the wrong side. So I'm going to take the comma off of here. Sorry, the colon and put it at the end. Now, third time's a charm, I could see that I'm getting the JSON, which represent the um, which represents the data that I just put in. So now that I know that my API is working, um, obviously in your case, you're probably going to be adding a lot more routes and a lot more data. But the focus for today is deploying this to Heroku. So in order to do that, there's a couple of things I need to do. I need to configure the app, first of all, to work with Postgres instead of SQLite 3, which is what we have now. So inside the gem file, I'm going to take this SQLite 3 part and move it to the development and test group because I don't want the app to use SQLite 3 in production. What I want to use in production, so I'll just define the production group. is to instead use the Postgres gem or the PG gem. And I will need to run bundle install to make sure that my uh, gem file lock gets updated accordingly. And in my database dot uh, YML, I want to make sure that in production, the um, connector I want to make sure that the adapter is PostgreSQL. If you've noticed on the left side, there are over 4,000 files that are waiting to be staged for commit, which is not normal. We want to change our git ignore so that it ignores all of the uh, files from the vendor slash bundle directory. So if we go to git ignore, all we need to do is add vendor slash bundle. And now we should see this update. So now we only have 77 files uh, that are ready to be staged. So let's do that. So we'll do git add all and we'll do git commit m. Let's just call this first commit. If you have your Heroku CLI installed and you've logged in using Heroku login, you should be ready to create your app. Um, you can do that simply by running Heroku create and you can add, you can uh, give your app a name and if it hasn't been taken yet, it'll work. If it has, it'll tell you. I'm just going to call mine JK dictionary. And to push my app to production, all I need to do is run git push Heroku master. Just give it a couple of minutes. And if it all goes well, you shouldn't see any red text or errors. And you can open your app simply by running Heroku open. However, 
you'll notice that it's not working. Even if you go to the uh, terms endpoint. And if you want to know why, you'll have to run Heroku logs dash dash tail. And here you'll notice that you haven't configured your database correctly. And so you're getting errors here. Uh, first here, because we didn't have a root route. And second, when we tried to reach the terms route, it tried to access the database, but uh, where is it? Here we can see the relation terms does not exist. What that means is even though we pushed up all our code, we haven't actually migrated and seeded the database on the Heroku side. So that's what we need to do next. And we can do that simply by uh, running Heroku run. And whatever follows is basically the same kind of commands that we would run locally. So in this case, we will run Heroku run rails, uh, rake db migrate. That'll create the tables. Once that's done successfully, you'll want to run rake db seed in order to execute the seed file and add in that uh, Apple definition that we defined earlier. And once that's completed, you should be able to go back to your app, hit the same endpoint, and see the data that we saw before. So that tells us that our API is working properly. And that's all there is to it. However, it's worth mentioning that if you are going to be deploying a front end app on a different server, then you might end up with some uh, cores errors because your front end app will be trying to make requests to a different origin. And to fix those errors, what you can do is you can go to the cores.rb file and define exactly which origins are allowed to make requests to your app. Um, you can put a wild card if you want to allow everything, but it's a much smarter idea to just put the URL of whatever front end app you will be deploying elsewhere. And that's it. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and I will see you all next time.